Hey everyone, Dwyer here. Civilization Beyond Earth has been out for a few days now, and I've been seeing a lot of the same questions come up over and over and over again, be it in live streams, uh, LPs, comments, uh, just various places. So I thought I would answer some of the more commonly asked questions. That way, if you are new to the game, let's say, you know, like even I was a couple of days ago, then maybe you can avoid some of the common pitfalls, get yourself a pretty reasonable start, that way you can see all of what this game is about, and have fun and enjoy playing it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our game. We're going to keep it on, I recommend, uh, Mercury for easy, and a small map as well. The sponsors, you might not know what they do immediately, just judging by uh, just looking at them. You can see, for example, that uh, not all of them are created equally, such as the Franco Iberia. You might uh, see a gain of free technology for every 10 virtues. You might think to myself, okay, that sounds pretty good. I like free technology. But the question then becomes, how quickly can you actually get 10 virtues? Well, answer there, not very, not very easily. If you have 10 virtues within the first 100 turns, congratulations. It's gonna, or, yeah, between 100 and 150 turns, that'll be your first. Uh, 20 virtues, uh, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. This is a very much a mid-game kind of thing. Uh, probably not for a beginner. If you want a nice start, you're looking towards the Cabaton Protectorate, you're looking towards the Pan-Asian Cooperative, and you are looking towards um, the Slavic Federation, in my opinion. Reason for those is they start off very, very early on in the game. The Pan-Asian Cooperative, as you can see, even if you're not sure when you get wonders, you may notice that worker speed, doing it right from the beginning of the game. Cabaton Protectorate. Your seeds and outposts are going to be acquiring new tiles right from the beginning of the game. And of course, what I say, Slavic Federation? Yeah. You gain a free technology very, very quickly because unlike the Franco Iberia, the Slavic Federation, when you discover, and you will, uh, a free orbital unit, it's going to occur within, a ten, within probably 10 15 uh, turns. So you're getting that one again very early on in the game. So I definitely recommend going for those first and foremost. They aren't necessarily the best. I just think they are the easiest uh, to start off with if you are a new player. Colonists, hands down, you're picking artists. Why? Because culture and health are the two hardest to come by resources in the game. Science is not, food is not, energy, production, both, none of these are. Culture, health are. Runner-up would probably be scientists, but I think scientist is more for... Uh, more towards intermediate because it's easy to go into negative health and that can be a bad thing Easy way to make sure you don't go negative health is to take artist which is going to give you plus one and culture Which is very good to have Spacecraft you're going probably for a tectonic scanner reason being uh, Unless you're playing multiplayer if you're playing multiplayer retrograde because you need to know as large an area as possible around you uh, that way, if you guys need to restart because everyone is in a really, really crappy location, you can find that out within like turn one and you can be like, nope, ha over half of us are getting bad starts. We're going to reroll. Uh, with single player, you can just begin again 10 turns down the road if you need to. Who cares? Chances of that are going to be slim because you're going to have scanner, you're going to see where petroleum is, geothermal and titanium. All those are very good things. Money is completely irrelevant, so we don't need the energy. Uh, coasts are completely irrelevant, not going to need that. Harmony, if you have your heart set on it, you might pick up life form sensor as, instead. Otherwise, Titanic Scanner. And we're going to be going into detail about these a little bit more later. Uh, cargo, you're probably choosing a worker unit under machinery, because you're not going to be attacking with one soldier in the very beginning of the game. I don't care what affinity you're choosing if you're brand new to the game. It's just not what you're going to be doing. Raw materials, clinic can wait until you can build it yourself. At that point, it'll probably take only five turns, so you don't really need to save it. Uh, laboratory pioneering is a good runner up, as well as hydroponics, but those two. Okay, pioneering is also noob friendly. Hydroponics is more intermediate, in my opinion. Definitely go with machinery. Last but not least, you can choose your planet. Um, I would say Protean or Terran worlds are most noob friendly. Terran probably being the most noob friendly because having everybody on one landmass might create threats that you don't really want. 
So I think the most noob friendly here is the Terran world. Now after you have that set up, you're going to be picking up the landing zone, and you're going to want to identify if something's good or bad. Let's identify a really, really bad one right now. Alright, here's a great example of an area that you do not want to look at if you are in fact new to Civilization Beyond Earth. Why? Because we have... Uh, come on, give me the highlight, there we go. We have an alien nest that's touching one of my city tiles, so it's really, really close. A alien nest right next to that that's also about to touch one of my city tiles. And despite the fact that you can't see it, because this is the wrong save file, I also have another alien nest over here that is going to be flooding me with enemies. If you are brand new to the game, you do not want to be outnumbered 3 to 1 at the start of the game. Are they the hardest enemies to deal with? No, not really, but if you want to deal with these tiles and start building them up, you need to eliminate them, which means you need uh, you need units, which means you're going to be needing probably more than one soldier, because as you can see here, we are outnumbered here, we're going to be outnumbered there. We're needing, what, one, two, three soldiers, maybe, to clear all this crap away. How long is that going to delay you? Let's take a look. That's eight, congratulations, times three. You really want to delay yourself that many turns? Let me tell you, you're going to see in, the, uh, in a moment an example of a really good start, and you'll see exactly what that kind of delay might mean in the beginning of the game. Uh, you also notice that there's nowhere to expand to, really, because this city is going to expand to at least three tiles, right? So about, it's going to expand to about in here, which means if we are going to take this for our expansion, it can't expand for jack crap. It can take titanium, which is kind of nice, uh, can get me some extra science, but it's going to be a pretty crap town. And the area over here is not going to be very much better, and I don't want to settle here anyway because it's too close to the AI and we'd be at war. So check out that scenario. We're at war here, we finally get done with being at war, we settle next to him, and now we're at war again. Congratulations, only he's more advanced because he didn't have to make crap soldiers in the beginning of the game. No, 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 no. He got to tech up. He got to uh, get his production online. I did not get to do that. So chances are this is going to be a, a very unfortunate start for us. Unless you are an intermediate player, you can handle this. If you're going Harmony, maybe you can handle this. As a new player, probably not. If you see it, avoid it. Time to move on. Okay, so on our bad start, we saw that with about 24 turns, hopefully, uh, it's about how long it would take us to start really dealing with the threats around us and get to do what we, in fact, want to do. So what does 24 turns mean? Well, here you can see we are on turn 26, and because we got to do what we wanted to do in this really excellent start, we are already at a uh, level si a, sorry, a size 7 town. We've also been able to expand. Uh, comparatively, you can see the uh, AI around me. 2, size 3, size 2. What are you at? What are you at? Size 1. Yeah, they can't compete. We are way larger than them at the moment because we got to do what we wanted to do and we had a good start. So what makes this a good start? Well, aside from the fact that there are no fracking aliens around me, though there can be, if there were aliens in here, we would still be okay and we'd be happier about it. Uh, there weren't, but, you know, whatever. Well, actually, there might be over here. I haven't really seen that square, and I haven't really seen that square yet. Suffice to say, there probably aren't. But who knows? Doesn't matter. What matters is all of this freaking food we start off with. That's typically what you're looking for in the start of your brand new game. You want to see, especially if you're new, how much food you have, because food equals growth. You can see here, I've got one food tile, two food tiles, three food tiles, and when I get into the ocean, I can even get another one for myself. The reason why I'm at seven, and these fools are at two and three, and yeah, he was the highest, three, is because of those food tiles. Also, because of my virtues. Or my virtue? No, yes, my virtues. What did I take for myself? I took for myself uh, the free colonist unit, which, and the uh, 10 food retaining, allows me to keep as much food as possible, as well as expand happily before even pioneering is finished. You can see here I went straight for pioneering. Well, not straight for pioneering. I did take for myself ecology, but straight after ecology I went for pioneering, and I already have a town built and up before that's done. That's that's pretty that's pretty important. That's powerful. That gives me a really huge jump. They're on one, and very shortly, 
my expanded town is going to be as large or larger as their capital cities. That's crazy. Why? Because he also has access to food. That's what you want in expansion. Place to expand, he's got plenty of room to go to, uh, he's got plenty of things to go after, he's got uh, nice production around him, and he's got food. That's good. Now, you also want a little bit of production somewhere, and I've got that over here too. That in itself is a good start. Now, what would make it what makes it kind of a great start is I can choose what I want to do. If I want to be a uh, yeah, if I want to go supremacy for my um, uh, for my uh, affinity, I can see that I also happen to be have access to Fraxite all over the freaking place. Fraxite is just everywhere. So great, I can go supremacy this game. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to say that word. I can go supremacy that <laughs> this game, uh, and that's really, really great to do. Also, my my uh, uh, AI rather are just far enough away that I can attack them if I want, but they're not impinging on my plans. One other thing that makes it really, really great is I've got stations nearby to trade with, which you can see that I'm already. I might no, I'm not doing. This is way too early in the game. Move twenty. Yeah. Yeah, turn 26. I don't even have trading up yet. And we're doing really, really good. So all of that makes this a really, really wonderful start. If you wanted to go purity, unfortunately, you'd be a little bit pissed, because as you can see here, not a whole lot of floatstone. Well, okay, yeah, never mind. Sorry, there's floatstone. Yeah, you can go purity too. Have at it, dude. Knock yourself out. You can do whatever you want here. Have to adjust your, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you can go whatever you want. Leaning towards supremacy could go there. Probably not going to go Harmony because there's not a lot of Xenomass. Yeah, one thing you can't do is you really can't go and do uh, Harmony because there's no Xenomass, as you can see here. Uh, just nothing around that uh, I don't think I've even seen one squad. Is okay, there's Xenomass way down there. But chances are you're not going to go Harmony because it's just not enough in the area, in my opinion. Possible, but meh. So all that makes that a great start. So you got your race, you got your sponsors, you decked out the beginning, you've got a nice starting area, you know what not to look for, so where do you go from there? Well from there, uh, as you can already see over what I've done, I've gone to ecology. Reason being, because I want the ultrasonic fence. What does that do? Well suppose I didn't have such a great start. Suppose I wanted to trade with other people. Maybe I'm playing multiplayer and my traders are gonna go like far away. I don't want them killed by aliens. When you grab the ultrasonic fence, you can reverse the polarity on it through a quest, which immediately pops up. Well, not immediately, but soon. That allows you to tell all aliens to back off my trading convoys. So you can make uh, all your... So you can trade in peace, not worrying about them getting killed. Great. After that, typically want to pick up pioneering if you don't have it already. So you can expand if you haven't already. And you can also start trading, which is why we got the fence. By the time the fence is done, and your pioneering is done, and your trading is coming online, they're probably going to be protected. So you can see it kind of moves nice and smoothly from one to the other. We have no wasted motion so far. We got one, it led to the other, it led to something else. After that, you probably expanded. We're going to pick up genetics, because you can see we're already at negative three here on our health. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to start mattering until you're about negative eight, until you start feeling the effects of it. So we can go deep into the negatives for a long time before we really need to get this up online and start getting uh, these plus one and plus two to all of our cities. After that, I mean, you can even see here, plus two, plus one. If both my cities had that, that's what? Six. So that would put me at positive three. Good job. You can also see why we took that one, that uh, plus health in the beginning of the game. Because without that, when we expand, mm, kind of hurts. But that brings us to trade trade is very very important let's go take a look at why all right so here we are in another one of my uh, openings where we've encountered a supremacist not a supremacist a purity's wet dream we are all by ourselves there's no one around us there's aliens on an island waiting for us to kill them and we've got floatstone we even have you know a little bit of food uh, there and here okay xenomass but we have a little bit of food, not much, could use more, could use more, 
But we've got so much resources. We've got gold, we've got titanium around us. We've got everything that we want. So the question is, why is trade a good thing, right? Yeah, let's take a look at why trade is a good thing. Because in this game, unlike in other games, let's say, you can do cool things like, uh, I don't know, trade with your own towns. Let's look at that again. This is a town I just built, right? Uh, Azraya. And uh, Mandiria right here is my main one. That was second town being built. Now, when you have a new town, you have no production, pretty much no production, right? But you can see they're building things pretty quickly. Why is that? That is because of trade. You can see my second town and my, uh, sorry, my third town and my second town are trading. And they're getting 11 production out of it. And they're even giving some back. And food. So they're getting growth and massive production back and forth from trading. That's horrifyingly broken. If this is nerfed, I won't be surprised in any way, shape, or form. I don't think anyone who's played this game will be surprised if a patch is going to come out and nerf the hell out of uh, intercity trading. Because it's... There's almost no reason to trade with anyone else besides yourself. Uh, I'm trading with the Golden Temple as well, because plus for culture. Culture is one of the hard things to come by. So absolutely, I don't care about the money, I don't care about the food. I do care about the culture, so I'll trade for that culture. And I've got my virtues. Fun, 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 fun stuff. Because you can see here, like, this is this is a pretty large area, right? Do you see any area here that says plus culture? One, gold. And gold is rare, okay? I say that, and there's two right there. But I, I swear to God, gold is rare, okay? So getting plus culture, not hard, not hard. Uh, not easy to do, not easy to do at all. So great, I'll I'll take that I'll take that trade all every day. All right, so here we're going back in town a little bit uh, to turn 23. Don't have the great start, so we're only four right now. Even that was better than you know everyone around me, but whatever. Uh, and we can see my explorer about to hit one of these fun little guys over here. These resource pods. Now these resource pods contain stuff. This one happened to be research. Um, I really shouldn't say this, but those research pods, they're randomized on pickup. That could be anything. Uh, I can reload my game, and it would might be the same thing, might be something else. Uh, Vice and say, that gave me 16 research, so pioneering just went down a lot faster. Um, it could have been... Uh, what could it have been? Oh crap, it could have been a lot of things. It could have been production. It could have been culture. Culture could have, like, a plus 16 culture right now. That just gives me another virtue, which I shouldn't get for a couple of turns. That's that's significant. So you get culture out of them. You get virtue out of or culture out of them. You get uh, production, science, mm, energy, mm, whatever. Uh, you get other things out of them. You can get freaking orbital satellites out of them, which is crazy. You could get virtues out of them. You can get or not virtues, you can get an affinity level up out of them. You can get so much crap out of these things that they're worth going for. So much so, in fact, that I think... Do I have them yet? I must, right? Uh, military. Yeah, I've got three explorers currently uh, searching. Why three? Because I don't know why three. Can't really see them right now. Oh yeah, I got one excavating here. He's going to dig up something really, really cool. Yep, you can see right here. Right what I was talking about. Expedition completed, we just got an alien manticore under my control. So I just got a free unit from digging that guy up. I can tell him to go do things, I can tell these guys to keep searching for stuff. This is why we spam these guys. Getting mass amounts of intel, getting a lot of benefits from the pods, getting just free stuff all over the place. Definitely worth it. Explorers are awesome in early game. I advise you get a couple of them before doing anything else. Maybe a worker. A worker first, if you for some reason didn't pick him in the beginning of the game. Definitely workers, then explorers. And seriously, hard to go wrong. Very, very, very hard to go wrong if you do that. So if you're brand new to the game, hope these tips really, really help you out. Depending on the start, even on the hardest difficulty, even on the hardest difficulty, you're going to find yourself top score 
for at least 150 turns. Promise. Next video, we'll go into more mid-game stuff, specializing the, the, uh, the three different affinities, how to continue uh, building past your awesome start that you have selected for yourself, and getting into all of that fun stuff. So I'll see you next video for that. Hope this one helped. Have fun playing the game, and I'll see you all next time.